Welcome to Morningside Uniting Church Sunday online service. Every time we worship and praise the name of the Lord, we light this candle to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the eternal light of the world, is always with us. Have a quick announcement that we are having annual congregational meeting on the 19th of February, uh, right after service. So meeting starts at 10.30. Uh, in the church room. Now let us continue to worship God. Come let us worship God who has called us to be a holy people and has established an everlasting covenant through Jesus Christ our Lord. We come in spirit and in truth. This is God's world and we are part of it. In God's world there is wonderful diversity. The church is made up of people from the north, south, east and west. In God's family, all are to be loved and accepted. May we reflect the hospitality of God. Within us and amongst us, the Spirit unites us, building bridges we cannot build alone. God has made us one. God has made us all different. Wherever we go, we can meet God. There is nowhere we can go where God cannot reach us. Now let us pray. The God who created the universe and sustains it in love calls us here. The Christ who came and lived a life like us was crucified, rose and reigns with the Father calls us here. The Spirit in whom God's truth and power still comes to us calls us here. Amen. Now let us sing together, opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. Now let us sing together.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to the table. Therefore, let us now confess our sin confident in God's forgiveness. Now let us confess together. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wanderings from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now hear the good news. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. In confidence, I can affirm that in Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 through 35. Now let us hear the living word of the Lord. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee, and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephata, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us pray again as we prepare our hearts and minds for listening of the living word of the Lord. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Do you know how many languages people speak nowadays? How many languages in the world? Over 7,000. Including, well, in over 7,000, excluding sign languages. Do you know how many people are deaf in the world? About 70 million people. 70 million people they are not able to hear the word of the Lord. They can only see the word of God. So did you also know that there are many Christians who make the word of God visible with different sign languages for the deaf Christians? Let me show. Let me show you a, vi a short video clip and guess what he is talking about. And so, next slide, please. Use your imagination. It's a Bible story in sign language. You have no idea. I'll give you a clue. Daniel. Daniel, a lion's den. King, didn't you write a decree saying that no one worships any God except you? But your servant Daniel has been praying to God and you will get to see. I had no idea until 
I read this, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, subtitles. Now you know what's going on. King, how come? You gave your favor to Daniel. He's been praying to his God, not you. So you got to put him somewhere. Put him in lion's den. And King was puzzled because he trusted Daniel so much. So he tried to find ways to save him. But his officials kept telling him, No! Kill him, kill him. And you you, you figure out what he's talking about pretty soon. So keep watching. Moving the cover of the lion's den and drag an animal called lion and put him in there. Lion is walking towards Daniel, right? You can see it, right? You don't, you don't hear, but you see what is going on. And next slide, please. He's showing a story about Daniel being thrown into lion's den. You may ask, deaf people, they can see, so they can read the Bible as we do. Yes, they can read, but because of their limited understanding of sounds, their imagination is also limited. So the best way to deliver the Bible to them is to show them with sign languages. And then deaf Christians can see, hear, and feel each story from the Bible. Because I went to Israel with Wycliffe, Bible translators, I was also invited by this place called IBLT, Institute of Biblical Languages and Translation. One of their projects is to translate the Old Testament written in Hebrew into sign language. So we met about six people from all over the world, one from Brazil and Indonesia, and the six different countries coming to Jerusalem to learn the Bible written in Hebrew language and also learn the sign language in Hebrew so that they may translate Hebrew sign language into their local sign language. In Australia, we call it Oslan, right? So these deaf Christians came to Jerusalem to learn about the, the Bible. And they also have to learn the Hebrew sign language, right? And that's how they communicate. That's a common you know, language, sign language for them. And then they go home and teach people the Bible story with their local sign language. And next slide, please. I have another video clip. Thank you, man. So first that they have to learn Hebrew sign language so, can, so that they can learn about the Bible written in Hebrew language. And then they come together to discuss, to find the, the true meaning, the closest meaning of the Bible they are translating into their local sign language. Beyond their limits and disabilities, there are many Christians trying to read, see, and understand the Bible as a living word of God. Then, how much do we try to read and understand the living word of God? How much and how often do we open our eyes and ears and mouth towards the word of God? Today's reading is about Jesus healing a deaf man. So I hope and pray that our ears and our eyes and our mouth are open as we listen 
to the story this morning. Because of Jesus, the deaf man was able to hear and speak. In the same way, because of Jesus, today we will hear and speak about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As you can see the map on the screen, next slide please. Jesus was in Tyre, and then uh, the beginning of the arrow on the left and short one, that's where Tyre is, by Mediterranean Sea, and then went up to north towards Sidon, which is about 35 kilometers away. So maybe uh, Jesus you know, should, have, should have taken maybe just you know, a day to travel between them. And after visiting both cities, Tyre and Sidon, Jesus wanted to go to the region of the Decapolis. But in order for him to get to the Decapolis, you see all the way up Sidon, all the way down to the Decapolis, ten cities, he had to walk by the Sea of Galilee. By the way, they call it Sea of Galilee. It's not a sea, it's, it's, it's a lake. But the reason they call it Sea of Galilee is that there is no, no word. They didn't have a word for lake. So that's why they call it Sea of Galilee, and we still call it Sea of Galilee. So Jesus had been walking from Sidon all the way to the Decapolis. Maybe he's been walking about maybe two or three days. And then a deaf man was brought to him by people. We don't know who they are, but they must have heard about Jesus. So they began to beg Jesus to heal the man. As today's reading describes, Jesus placed his fingers into, man, into the man's ears and said, F. Fata, be opened. And the deaf man's ears were opened. Not only was he able to hear, but also he could speak. So their request for healing the man was answered by the words and actions of Jesus Christ. It's another great healing story. But how? How can we relate ourselves to the story since no one's deaf in our church? I'm talking about physical deaf, not your selective deaf ears in your marriage. I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> but I'm talking about your physical deafness. What I'm saying is that no one's deaf in our church. Then what can we learn from the story? So I had to keep reading the Bible until I was stopped. And Matthew chapter 13 about Jesus teaching after giving people a series of parables. Especially the parable of a farmer sowing seeds. You know about you know, the sowing seeds, the parable. Right? The you know, farmer sowing seeds on uh, uh, rocky areas and then, uh, you know, didn't grow at all and kind of, uh, you know, thorn bushes into thorn bushes and didn't grow at all. And then, but when he planted seeds in a fertile soil, then it started growing. That's the parable. And after that parable, Jesus said this, reciting, reciting Isaiah chapter 6. Go, uh, next slide please, there is a word, yeah. Go and tell these people, be, uh, uh, be ever hearing but never understanding, be ever seeing but never perceiving. Make the heart of these people colored. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears. Understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. He's not talking about physical death, but our closed attitude and rebellion against Jesus. When people are against each other, when people are against each other, when the people, uh, when people hate each other, they stop listening to each other, right? So Jesus is not talking about you on death. But Jesus is telling people, I give you the good news, but you deaf people, you have closed your ears to hear the good news. 
And then, after that meditation, I had to look up the word Jesus used to heal the man, F. Fata. This word is derived from a Hebrew Aramaic word, Katak. Patak, Patak, which means opened. And after studying this Hebrew word, Patak, an inspiration came to me because this word is not describing an action. I'm opening the book. No, it's not really describing the action of opening something, but a stage or condition of certain situation. Let me go back to Daniel again. When King displayed his decree of, if you worship other gods than me, then I'm going to put you in lion's den, right? And after Daniel learned the decree, but he still ran up to his prayer room, where, towards Jerusalem, and his window was opened. It's condition. The window was already opened. And his Bible was opened. It's a stage, and it's a condition. So the word is not an action of opening something, but a condition of something being already opened. Opened. I hope you understand and are following me this morning. So the word, so when Jesus said, F. Fata, he did not order the man to open his ears and mouth, but he announced and confirmed the man's condition that his ears and mouth were already opened. But he didn't realize. He didn't think so. That's why people brought him to Jesus for healing. But Jesus said to him, Your ears have been opened, but you did not believe. So now believe in me as you believe in my word. F. Fa. Fa. When Jesus told people about building the temple in three days, those people who heard him saying so, they ignored what he said, as if they were deaf. Jesus healed and fed thousands thousands of people, and people saw it, but they ignored who he was, as if they were all blind. Many Christians struggle in many ways and through many times in our lifetime on earth because we've been influenced and sometimes inundated by worldly worries and doubts and struggles. Even though they saw, they say their faith in Jesus, but they blind themselves from who Jesus is and cover their ears from his promises and the good news. So as a consequence of disbelief and doubting, many Christians do not see what Jesus has promised and completed already. Many Christians hear the gospel, the good news, but they do not find joy, peace, hope, and love in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are one of them today, Hear what Jesus has to say to us this morning. F. Fa. Ta. Your ears are already opened. Your eyes are already opened. Your mouth is already opened. Realize and believe in me. So this Sunday, I'd like to encourage and bless you to journey into a place where Jesus said, F. Fa. Ta. Be opened so that you may also open your ears and eyes and mouth to see the presence of the Lord in your life and faith. So, F. Fata, be opened always for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Now let us sing together.
As the followers of Jesus Christ, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God through him. And as you do so, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now let us bless each other. God bless you.